So we're going to show how to do a mechanical uh, steel replacement using the mechanical steel cartridge on this uh, Willow Helix E pump. What we're going to do is uh, isolate it. So we're going to close the discharge valve. And we're going to close the control the inlet valve. Uh, if you take a look in here real quick, you can see from when it was leaking, so it has a pretty good lead that water just constantly coming in there. And this is a air release valve that you can open up. And um, this way you can relieve any water pressure that might still be trapped in between these two ISO valves. So if I kind of take that all the way loose, I don't have to worry about water popping off while we're taking this stuff apart. Snug that back up. Six Allen wrench here, and we're gonna start by loosening the coupling. That way, the motor shaft and the pump shaft are separated from each other. So the next step we're gonna do uh, this motor shaft has this uh, little coupling attachment to there. So what we're gonna do these four bolts, the same size six. We're gonna take those off. That's gonna free up some space to to get that seal out of there when it's time. So you're gonna need a set of uh, channel locks to hold the shaft still so they can spin while you loosen them up. So that one's loose. Then we're gonna need a number six again, Allen, to take this little screw off the, uh, the pump shaft part. Now this is kind of the, uh, only like what a pin would do across the shaft to hold the coupling in place, they use this little washer with two arms on the side. Okay, now this is a size um, five Allen bit, and you just loosen these four screws up here, and take those off. All right, now with a size two Allen, you wanna take these tiny little set screws out of here, or you don't have to take them out, just loosen them up. I'm using like the, the plain little Allen L set size two, there's three of them on here. Uh, you see this little sleeve that's on this shaft? You can grab that with a pair of uh, channel locks and that that same piece uh, leads to the very bottom of this whole seal. So don't grip it real tight, but just get a hold of it and kind of work it up the shaft. And uh, you'll see how the rest of that assembly is starting to raise up. But you can just keep doing that. And uh, yeah, pretty soon you'll have the whole the whole rest of that mechanical see how it's kind of slipped up right there, coming up now. It's almost all the way up. I think I can do the rest by hand. About ready to put the new cartridge seal in there. And first, what I want to do is get just a little bit of this faucet grease and just kind of spread it around there, just so it slips on there without uh, damaging any of the O-rings on here. There's several O-rings inside this assembly, and you don't want any of them rolling out of the little uh, groove that they're set into. So, yeah, just a little tip there. So just put it over the shaft like that. And just press it on there. We had to loosen these uh, screws on the bracket. It was not letting it slide down good. So we'll go ahead and slide it all the way down like that. All right, so line up with those bolt holes. Mechanical seal kit, it comes with new screws to put in here. So you don't want to put those old rusted ones back in there. And I'm going to dab them with just a little bit of anti-seize so they don't run the risk of getting um, stuck in there. So I got the new seal in, I tightened these bolts in with some anti-seas and I still got this piece loose with the spacer in there. You want to leave that on there. Now I'm going to put um, this little washer on there that maintains that gap in the suction. That's just the number six down there. This motor extension on here for these number six Allen screws, bolts I mean. I'm gonna hold it there, just to line it up easier. Get it started. Let it hang, get the making started. Now we're back to the point where we're gonna put these couplings on. 
Uh, so just make sure you got the got them together the same way, the fatter side on top, the thinner side on bottom. And you're going to um, get kind of the ledge of this right here under that washer on both sides. And you're, you're gonna want the arms of this washer to be the gap, what's gonna make the gap on the coupling. So you go like that. And then you're gonna raise it up. And once you raise it up, you'll see that the gap is gonna be like pretty even on there. While you're holding that up, you're gonna wanna get these couplings start, or get these uh, bolts started on the coupling. So when you, when you slip it up and then everything kind of snapped in place, you heard it earlier, um, that what that's doing is the coupling is gripping the pump shaft via that little washer with the arms on the side. And when you pick up on it, you're basically picking up this pump stack that's inside of this can from dragging off the ground. So it's kind of just hanging there in the, in the can system. So that way the impellers aren't dragging on the bottom or scraping on the top. Once you have it like that and you got the bolts tight on your coupling, what you want to do is tighten these small set screws on this ring piece here. And once you do that, you're going to take this spacer off and it should stay like that. So we got this all put back together. We can see how it spins really free. Like you don't feel it really dragging on anything. So we know the, the bearings in the motor are likely good. And that the, uh, more importantly here, the, the shaft uh, assembly of, of impellers that's attached to this pump shaft is suspended inside of that can. Get a little dry so we can see water accumulating there. Open this back up. Okay, you see water shot up in the beginning. That's that. That's that air and water pressure kind of going back in there, putting everything back where it used to be. I'm gonna open this up. Complete. See, there's a little air in there. Like that now. Sometimes uh, when you put a new seal in there, it will still leak a little bit until you start running the pump. Because those two uh, ceramic surfaces are touching each other, but they're not quite even. But once you start to do that rotation, they'll seal up and be flat up, push it up against each other. Okay, so I'll open that valve. That's the water coming in. This is the discharge valve. Now, this is a little different because we have a broken check valve here. So the pressure that this pump is producing is causing this pump shaft to spin. That same force that's making it spin should make the mechanical seal set in place. We're about to stop the other pump and run this one and check rotation and make sure there's no leaks anymore. I got the pump running through the VFD. The seal seat program. I'm looking at the bottom and there's no more water coming out at the bottom here.